Thank you, Wendy. Um, I'm so glad you all decided to come along. You know, this whole Zoom thing with uh, a lot of us working more from home uh, or completely from home has transformed how my business has been. Uh, and the way I look at it, we're kind of all fellow journeyers on this remote work and remote facilitation thing. I'm here today to share with you some of the things that I've learned over the last couple of months. Uh, am I the, the be all and end all expert on how to facilitate via Zoom? No, but I've been facilitating for a very long time. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, I'm Julie Poland. I'm based in York, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour southwest of our fearless headquarters in Reading. Um, and last Saturday, the 20th of June was my 30th anniversary as part of this crowd. <laughs> Back when Al still had hair. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. Um, my thing in this crowd has kind of been all about facilitation. Um, and while I typically like to have, hey, how you doing, Stinson group? Um, while I typically like to facilitate fully and everything is all participation, what I thought might be helpful is to start with uh, some slides of just some kind of fundamental stuff. Please feel free to jump in because this is intended to be a conversation, but I wanted to give us kind of a common ground uh, for questions and discussion. Before I get into that, hi Sandy. Before hi. I get into uh, that, I'd like to ask you just by show of hands here on your camera, how many of you have facilitated using Zoom already? How many of you feel comfortable facilitating using Zoom? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> Mixed bag. Well, I'll tell you right now, one of the things that happens with Zoom is one of the things that was happening to me today. Um, with you guys, this is like my third Zoom thing today, so you know, eye drops have become appropriate about mid-afternoon when you're doing all the screen time. But also today of all days, my earlier today, my bandwidth was giving me problems. So I just want to tell you, it's part of our shared experience. Um, so far, so good, so we'll just take it there. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen with you. Um, so I have some goodies here to show you. I promise this will not be death by PowerPoint, but are you seeing a slide up there? Yes. Definitely. Awesome. And we'll see if I can advance it this way because I just realized as I'm talking to you before when I've done it, I've advanced it just with the slides inside PowerPoint. We're going to learn something together. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Yeah, this is going this is what we're going to have to do. Okay. So, I'm going to have to do this a different way. <clears throat> I'm going to have to share it a different way. I'm going to have to share it inside PowerPoint for the moment because it's not cooperating the other way. Um, let me flip it. Are you seeing all of you? Yep. Yes. You're seeing yourselves? Okay. Let's see if we can have you seeing Zoom. I mean, seeing you, the, the PowerPoint's trying to edge its way in, and now you're going to come back here. Okay. Voila. So now are you seeing the, the PowerPoint app? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Get you up here so I can see your faces. <clears throat> All right, so let's just start with the, the fundamentals about facilitation because Zoom is just another, it's just another vehicle. Um, facilitation means to make things easier. And so we have a couple jobs when we're in that role, Zoom or no Zoom. One is to get engagement from people, um, manage over contributors. I'm sure none of you have ever experienced that. <laughs> um, draw out the vacationers and prisoners, um, balance the time that you have available, the participants and their needs, and also the goals for the session, the out, 
outputs from the session. Um, and with a Zoom bonus, that sometimes you can do a little showmanship based on the tricks you know how to do on Zoom, right? For example, Mr. Kovitz is playing a trick on us in Zoom. Um, now, Al, with your virtual background, do you have a, a camera that gives you a green screen, or is that just the camera for your laptop? That is just a picture that you can put up for your background. You can put up yes. any of the pictures on your computer, you can choose to put as your background. Yes. Are you using the camera from your computer or to, yes. to be on Zoom? Yes. That was my question. Because okay. if you're using a camera that's on your computer, uh, like for instance mine, because I have curly hair, there's this cloud. Yeah. That <laughs> I see a couple of <laughs> talking about that. Uh, so I tend not to use the virtual background, but that is one of the tricks that you can do too. Um, I, I have a, a friend here in town that does an awful lot of Zoom workshops. He deals with a lot of college students. So he's put the back cave in the background. He's put, uh, what is it, Tatooine from one of the Star Wars movies. Um, he does the background specifically to create um, some mood in his participants. <clears throat> so in terms of physical setup, uh, Wendy and I were just talking about this before the uh, beginning of this. I just discovered that it's really helpful to have two monitors if I'm doing a lot of Zoom, especially if I want to share a screen. Uh, because if I'm sharing a screen and I don't have two monitors, I can't see any of you. And as a facilitator, that handicaps me a little bit um, if I can't respond to body language or something or a hand signal that says I need to take a break, etc. The other thing about camera positioning, um, I'm a person of a certain age, and I'm not going to say how many, but it's a lot. Hi, Bertha. Welcome. Um, and so my in my office, I have my laptop on top of two inboxes and a, a coffee table book so that you are not only looking up at my chin. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Julie, I yes. have to interrupt you, but I, what I'm seeing on the screen is just your title slide and then the other slides on the left. Can you get play the slideshow from the beginning if that's what you need to do my problem was it was not able I, I was not able to advance it when it oh. was in slide when it was in slideshow for ah. some reason that's why you're seeing the whole that's why you're seeing the whole thing okay uh, yeah that's what i i believe it's a different setup if you're using zoom webinar oh okay um yeah. but for this particular one today, I'm having issue. Okay. There's, an there's another thing that I could have done, which I'll show you a little later, that is kind of a workaround um, for it. Um, and we'll get, we'll get to that in a little bit. So that's the, that's the camera positioning thing. Um, lighting is a big deal. I never thought that I would do this. Well, first of all, if you're backlit, chances are, you're not giving somebody an energetic view of you. If you're backlit, they're not seeing your face. Mm -hmm. I'm a va an admittedly vain person. I never thought I would do this, but I'll show you what's here to my left. These little ring lights are used by all the uh, people that are doing um, <laughs> makeup how-tos on <laughs> the internet. Actually, if you look at any of the late night people that are now doing their shows from their bathtubs, um, I know I've seen it in the, reflected in the glasses of some of the people that are on there. A lot of people that were broadcasting in a studio but are now broadcasting from home are using ring lights. Um, again, they're at eye level. I have lighting over here and lighting up there to balance what's coming in my window. Fortunately, it's not working against me, but in the wintertime, there would be beams of sun coming right in. It's, it's surprising, maybe lighting seems like a um, superficial issue, 
But one of the things we talk about in facilitation is if you're trying to get energy in the room, part of it is you can't be quiet because if you're quiet, people get kind of um, bored or if you're slow. In my opinion, having an interesting visual image or at least one that is bright enough that helps to convey the kind of energy you would do by moving around a room or by having a, more of a stage voice. Um, your background, hi Jerry. Hello. Um, your sorry. back. That's quite all right. Your background is really important as well. Uh, you want to think about what is in your background. I changed my desk around specifically so that you would see my bookshelf instead of a closet. Um, I just like the background better. Uh, you can pretend that I read, but I actually do have business books back there. Um, you also want to be careful if you've got an open door in your background, because that means almost anything can happen back there <laughs> that you might not know about until later, uh, has, as some people have discovered the hard way. <clears throat> um, how many of you are kind of wired into some of the security stuff that's happened over the last few months with Zoom? Security issues? Okay. Um, when I first started doing coaching sessions via Zoom, I thought, this is great. I have my own Zoom room. So I'm going to give everybody my, their Zoom code. They can come in my room, and um, that will keep everything really easy. Well, what I've discovered, and fortunately I did not discover this the hard way, is if you have just your personal meeting ID, people can come into the room. If you are like I am, who is a high I and who tends to like to have conversations, and I'm not as disciplined as our coach friend David Herdlinger with having the curtain drop down at one hour and 15 minutes max, somebody could be popping into your meeting room while you still have another meeting going on. Um, so now I always use a unique ID for all of my sessions. Um, passwords are now becoming integral to everything. Um, and now, uh, fortunately, Zoom has them integrated into the code to get in so you don't have to enter the numbers. Um, now, this is not on the slide that uh, where I am right now, but I just would ask, if just for now, uh, if you wouldn't mind muting if you're not talking because otherwise uh, um, if you're clearing your throat or the dog barks or a vacuum cleaner starts, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, how many of you have ever used a waiting room? Have you used a waiting room? Okay. I sort of, it, I sort of like waiting rooms and sort of don't like waiting rooms. The reason I do like waiting rooms is that's one of your security opportunities um, so that not just anybody can barge in on your session there for a while. There were people that were barging in on sessions, um, sharing porn and all kinds of wacky stuff just for jollies. Um, the challenge with the waiting room is if you are the only facilitator, like here, Wendy and I are here kind of in panel status. So Wendy can, can tend the waiting room. Wendy would also be able to uh, tend, she would also be able to tend um, a chat if we had a chat. Okay, so let me share. You also can lock a room once everybody is there so no one else can get in. Okay, these are my silly rules of engagement for Zoom. They're silly in how they're presented, but they're not silly for real. Um, thou shalt stay muted unless it is thy turn. I can't tell you how many times, um, uh, almost every single Zoom call that's not one-on-one, -on -one, um, there is some mute issue. Thou shalt have thy camera on. Uh, let me stop here for just a second and unmute if you have something to contribute here. Um, how many of you have had meetings where not everyone is on camera? Okay, for anybody who would like to chime in, how has that been when not everyone is on camera? 
Julie, the only time, it's Linda, the only time I've, I've had that occur is when somebody was joining the session by a phone. Okay. Uh, where they, you know, had no video available to them. Um, okay. You know, I, it, over the past few months, obviously, we've all gotten used to seeing folks. And so to not see folks seems a little weird. And I think it somewhat decreases their participation. Okay. Thank you for that, Linda. Who else? Sandy, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I've also had s similar to, to Linda that either because they don't, didn't have a camera on their computer, some of them just, they had no integrated camera and didn't have an external one, or they were on a cell phone to begin with because that was the only thing they had available, with, also without a camera. Um, and it is a bit problematic, and I must say, in those who had a camera on but had no audio and then had to phone in on a phone, so they were on two, two things. That's the other one you sometimes get, um, which is a bit cumbersome because you see them, you see two things, one just their name uh, from their cell phone or whatever plus the picture, but that's complicated if you ever try to use um, the breakout rooms. Yes, yes. <laughs> Julie, yes. this is Kim. I, I put in the comments that I haven't had an issue with that. Now, I have not experienced that on anything that I've been facilitating, but I have been on calls where people have not been on camera. And even though you have a, you may have a rule in that group that you know, you're, you're supposed to be focused on the call, you're not doing other work, et cetera. Uh, that doubt is there, you know, is, is that person really engaged or what are they doing since their camera's off? So, yeah. Agree. Tom, you had something you wanted to. Yeah, two things. Uh, one is occasionally, much to what Kim said, um, their video's not on we will specifically ask them if they're having a problem with their video. Uh, it kind of conveys an indirect message to them that we would like for them to join via video. But sometimes people are just uncomfortable. It's rare, but you get sometimes it's uncomfortable. And to Sandy's point, under the Zoom, uh, I think it's uh, version five of the app, you can now match the audio with the video so you only have one thing you're looking at now so that's a new feature in in the version five awesome thank you thank you for that uh, mike so i go to some meetings where people get up and they sit down they get up and they sit down and when they're doing that it's very distracting i just assume they had their camera off at that time and then some people pick up their phone and wander around you know so you're looking you know, at their feet, you're looking at the ceiling, you're looking at the cat. And I'd, I'd just as soon they turn their camera off when they have to get up and wander around because it, it distracts from everybody else. So there are times when I wish the camera was off and it's usually not. But normally I agree with you. As Simon Sinek says, being present is making the other person feel heard. If you have your camera off, I don't think I feel heard. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, it's partly from a selfish, um, uh, facilitator perspective that I want to see who's engaged and who's not. And there's one person that I have um, Zoom meetings with regularly, and they often will do the Zoom meeting while they're taking a walk. So I see trees passing overhead, phone lines, <laughs> you know, the wobbling image and that whole thing. But um, trying to have everybody on. The other thing that Zoom can help solve, and I had to kind of lay a ground rule about this one, this would be thou shalt have thine own camera on uh, and that is with an IT company that I work with regularly the CEO and the CFO like to be in an office together where the CFO is on camera the CF or the CEO is off camera and um, they're having their own little nonverbal interaction that is not observable to anyone else that is on the on the zoom meeting so that means it's just like if you're having um, a shared session with, let's say, a sales group where some people are at our home office and some are out at all these other dispersed offices. It creates an in-group and an out-group. And I, whenever possible, um, try to avoid those scenarios. So the last time we got together after having one experience with them doing that, um, 
I specifically requested that everybody be on their own camera. Um, camera was not an issue. I mean, this was a, an IT company, so they've got every gadget from Friday, right? But uh, so the CEO was on, but his camera was like this, right? That was pretty much the view that we saw of him through the whole thing. Um, which reminds me, it was just suggested to me uh, a couple days ago by somebody that does this all the time, that there should be about two fingers between your head and the top. Mine's a little bit, I'm down a little bit more than that. But you don't want to look, uh, you're all old enough to remember Edith Ann. You don't want to look like Edith Ann at the, you know. <laughs> This is how my mother does Zoom calls. <laughs> um, that's not how we do them. Okay, third uh, rule, thou shalt not take Zoom into the restroom. Uh, I know you've seen stuff go around the interwebs about that. It is truly not a joke. I was on a couple um, conferences a couple weeks ago and realized that I was not taking my screen into the restroom, but we were on break and I almost forgot to take my earbuds out. So I didn't have my camera in the restroom, but I had my microphone almost go with me to the restroom, which would not have been pretty. Thank heaven I remembered it. Um, thou shalt be aware of thy background. Um, just last week, there was uh, someone in the background uh, of her Zoom picture. I mentioned the closet before. Her closet looked like those closets that used to be on a show my kids watched called Zaboomafu. When they opened the closet, a whole bunch of stuff fell out on their heads. That's what that closet looked like. And it took focus totally away from the woman who was in the foreground. And the last is thou shalt minimize distractions. Um, my cat would love to be here with us right now. Uh, if my cat were with us right now, he would be right about here most of the time, and potentially be uh, turning my sharing on and off. Hi, George. I didn't say hello to you yet. Good to see you. Julie? Yes. Um, we have a question from the group, uh, and if you're going to get to this later, that's fine, but uh, one of the participants would like to know how you approach a client from moving their, their coaching or consulting face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual platform like Zoom. Is there a special way you go about that? In the conversations that I've had so far, um, most of my stuff started when we were already on Zoom. Um, there was one in particular that we started face-to-face, -face, um, and it, had, it was before COVID hit, but it was in the winter time, and so, uh, and they were an hour and a half away from my office. So I said, you know, I'm wondering if you're open to doing Zoom meetings because my clients have told me it, it's face-to-face -face is face-to-face. -face. I mean, it's not quite the same as actually being there. But um, I've not had anybody object to Zoom versus in-person. For me, my biggest issue is how to make Zoom as interesting as being in, in person. Because, I mean, those of you who have been around this crowd long enough know I like to walk around, use the flip chart, hand out post-it notes, and all that kind of stuff. And um, if you'll hang out with me for a couple minutes, I can show you a couple things that I've been doing to try and help that become not an objection. Um, I have not run into anyone that says they don't have the tools. Um, hey, Julie? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, that was actually my question. I, I, I didn't ask it very well. What I was getting at was, was not face to face, but someone maybe you've only been coaching or working with by phone. And then you want to approach the idea of going from just the phone call to to a Zoom platform. So, hey, we can actually see each other. Uh, and maybe that's a maybe that's a question to the whole group, how someone has has approached that. Oh, Kim, I think that's exactly what you do. Hey, we've been working together by phone, but I've been doing some more work by Zoom and I found it. I really like it and my clients like it that we can see one another. Would you be open to trying it? Simple as that. They can put Fair it enough. on their, they can talk to you on their smartphone. Um, I was having bandwidth issues earlier today. So I did my first coaching call with my phone propped up here against my laptop, totally using my cell, cell data 
to do it, I mean, that's one of the things that's been great about it. You can use that as a backup position if you absolutely have to. Um, for participant controls right now, Wendy and I can do screen sharing. You can't. But I can, uh, if I'm the only one controlling the Zoom meeting, I can allow anybody to do screen sharing. So if we're doing strategic planning, somebody has information they want to share, um, I can open that up for other people to share. With the interactivity, if I were polling the whole group, I would probably not go the same way all the time, and I probably would not just ask a question and just let everybody chime in. Since this is sort of presentation-y part of our session, um, I've been kind of mowing right along with intermittent questions. But if we were uh, a development group or a strategic planning group, I would do something like, wow, Bertha, you've been really dominating the conversation. I'd like to know a little bit about what your thoughts are. So I would then give Bertha an opportunity to chime in. Um, or, you know, if Lauren were, were really like, she had a lot to talk about, and inside my head, I'm thinking, okay, Lauren, this is going to take us 50 hours instead of 20 hours to get this done. I might say, thank you, Lauren. And then I actually have the opportunity to say, I really want to hear from the rest of the group. If you don't mind, just for a few moments, I'm going to mute you. So I can, I can Grab the, grab the handlebars if I want to really make sure that I've got control of the meeting. As for recording, um, most of the sessions that I do are not ones that would, people would feel comfortable participating in if we recorded it, uh, because we're doing live stuff. Uh, and I want people to be able to have a safe space to speak their mind. Um, but it's, it's simple to do on Zoom. Julie, um, it's yes. Linda. This, you know, me who's technologically challenged a lot of the time. Um, from a Zoom perspective, if you are the host, um, I believe you can mute everybody. Is that true? Can yes. You, can you mute individual people? Oh, yes. well, she's shaking her head. <laughs> okay, that answers that answers that question. Yeah. I've not had occasion to want to do that, but that's good to know. Yeah, you're like Mother Nature. You can do whatever you want, Linda. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of tools inside Zoom, you can share your screen or share an app. Um, right now, I am sharing. You'll see what I'm sharing. Let's see what happens when I do this. Come on, where's my cursor? This is the thing about having two screens that is not always fun. Okay, what are you seeing now? The arrow was over the minimize. Mm -hmm. It but went it hasn't to change the screen at all. The screen has to change, Jill. Okay. Then I'll just resume the share. Because on my end, on my end, oh, I minimized it on month. On mine, it went away. On yours, it didn't go away. Right. Um, there's a difference between showing the app and showing your screen. I am currently sharing my screen, uh, sharing the app. I'm sorry. Let me. I'm going to stop share for a minute. <clears throat> now I'm sharing my screen instead of sharing an app. Now that was, uh, oh, I see, that was a, uh, now what do you see? Your desktop. Yeah. So word of warning, <laughs> when we were talking about beware of backgrounds, beware of what is on your desktop. Because if you have any sensitive stuff that is open, um, you could create an issue. So let me get back to this. Okay. So you now have the facilitating thing on here again? Yes. But we're at the beginning? Okay. So tools inside of Zoom. Zoom does have a whiteboard. Um, and 
I'm not going to take it, take you to it right now because it's bad. Um, it just isn't very responsive. Um, I'll show you a way to work around that. Um, if you want to use it to take notes, it's just really clunky. Um, there are also breakout rooms and um, Wendy, are they on my controls or your controls to do breakout rooms? They're on my controls, but what I can do is probably if I make you a host, then they'll go to yours too. We don't need, I don't need to send you to have, has everybody done breakout rooms? There you go. You're yes. now first. I'm seeing thumbs up for breakout rooms, so I won't take you there. And there are also polls. Has, who, by show of hands, who's used a poll? Okay, so that's one of the options. Now, um, if you want to add some of these things like break-ins and polls, it won't automatically show up at the bottom uh, in your Zoom unless you go in and look at your um, systems and you have to kind of enable some of these things ahead of time in order to use them when you're during a, doing a session. Now, this is the fun part. This is tools outside of Zoom. Um, you can use Word or Google Docs. Um, if I were going to, let's just see if I can do this here. <clears throat> It's, it's always wonderful when it's live, right? Everything happens really fast. Word is trying to open, I think. Okay. So what are you seeing now? Same thing? You're, you see, word. you're seeing Word? Yes. So I'm sharing my screen, not my app. So you can see what happens here. So if I want to do Word, I can actually just take notes and everybody can just watch the notes that I'm taking right on here. So uh, if you're a fast typist, you could do that. Uh, you could share the screen for somebody else, that's let somebody else share their screen, have them be a scribe like you might do with a flip chart. Okay, so that's one of the, one of the other things that you can do if you want to take notes like you might want to do in a development session or if you want to do it um, as part of strategic planning. The challenge is it's just not super exciting. So let me show you the thing that I've, that I just taught myself to do this really. I, like I said, we are fellow journeyers. I'm not kidding. I am learning as I go. So I'm going to stop share for a moment. I'm going to share something else. Julie, can I ask a question about Word while you do that? Yes. So have you tried dictate um, to speaking your annotation so that as, as it's coming in, you speaking to it and it just types it up for you or no, through Word? I have not, okay. but that's an interesting idea. Um, there are so many things I would not want Word to write down <laughs> that I say in between. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to, you don't want to witness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could be that quick on the trigger. <laughs> I have a lot of editing to do after the session. Okay. So I'm going to share this screen with you. Okay. Um, what are you seeing now? A notepad. Okay, what you are seeing is a thing called GoodNotes on my iPad. So if I'm doing a coaching session and I want to do the concept, I can, I can do the life wheels in my usual wonderful handwriting. Um, I can take notes about goals and um, they can't see my pen, but it's, probably the closest thing to using a flip chart that I can uh, remember using just because it makes it live and they can see movement. I think it's always great if they can see movement in the room rather than have everything be static, which to me is the biggest challenge of Zoom, that it can be static. Um, you can uh, erase. 
Does, has anybody used Good Notes? It's probably my you favorite. Call it good Notes. Good Notes. Yes. I'm going to go out of here for a second. Yes, it's called Good Notes. <clears throat> As opposed Is it an to app? Bad Notes. It's an it's an app for iPad or iPhone. Um, oh. And the the thing that's great about it. Now, one thing you want to know if you want to use it, I mean, I'm using, I'm using an Apple Pencil with my iPad. And um, one of the things that I got for my iPad, there's a thing called a, a paper feel or paper-like um, screen protector. And it actually gives... Like I've been using tempered glass on my screen and my devices in order to have it not be as vulnerable, but this paper feel actually adds a little bit of friction to the pen. So you actually write better because it feels more like you're writing on paper. It, I didn't believe it until I actually experienced trying to write on the tempered glass. It was just too slippery. I couldn't control what I was doing in my writing and my drawing is bad enough as it is <laughs> when I get wound up or something. So, oh, and you can also, for those of you who know I'm like the, the queen of smelly markers, you can also change the colors of the, of the writing as you're writing or drawing or filling in all that kind of stuff. If you, if you, to me, if you're going to do a lot of Zoom stuff, if you already use a tablet, that's a really good app. It's a free app. You can organize your notes uh, either in two forms. Um, each one, you open a document, and there are even different templates. You can have plain paper. You can have lined paper, college ruled, or other, you know, the bigger rule, um, graph paper. And uh, your filing system, you can um, send things that you've done in your notes, you can put it in a folder or you can put it in a notebook. So if you have clients that you're kind of doing running engagements and you want to keep all your client stuff together, I typically will use a notebook and then that notebook has everything. I just date every page as I'm doing it and so I've got my notes I can go back and refer to. There is, and birth of this gets to your point from earlier, you can also if your handwriting is good enough or it can learn it fast enough, um, you can actually convert your written stuff to typed. But I have not undergone that learning process after a couple rather dramatic failed experiments with them <laughs> interpreting my writing. But I understand it's a teaching thing, sort of like Siri understanding how you speak. Yes. Um, this can learn how you write so it can convert your writing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't checked the chat box recently. Let me just see. Okay, la 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 la. Someone at the door. Using post-its on poster paper. Hey, perfect cue for the next segment here. Let me uh, open a site that I've been using. This is my probably my second favorite tool. It may likely be one of my favorite tools, except it has a learning curve, and I'm fairly young in the learning curve. So I'm signing in right now, and then I'll share my screen with you. <clears throat> it's called Mural. Mural is a website. And, um, well, I'll take you back to the Take you back to the home. Hang on a second so I can show you around a little bit. I'm going to share my screen once I get my cursor down here. All right. This is called Mural. Okay, are you seeing a thing that has my face all over it? One says tan sample, one says untitled. Yes. Okay. Mural is intended to be a collaborative tool. So ideally, if you have clients that are somewhat tech savvy, they can use this as a collaborative tool, even if you're not with them. Um, and the company that runs Mural gives you the opportunity as a coach to have a free Mural account 
with a certain number of private rooms and some public rooms. It has some templates of different types of things. Um, so, but let me just show you what I just did to give you an idea of what you can do in Mural. Okay, if you look down here in the lower right, it zooms so that you can move around your mural. And so as I'm doing an activity for a client, I can put one activity here. I intentionally left a corner visible so I knew where I was going next. Um, <clears throat> but these things are post-it notes, okay? I used this particular one when I was working with a group shortly, uh, or we were about a month into the COVID, uh, everybody shut in their house kind of scenario. And what we were trying to identify were some of, I was trying to get them out of, we're all freaked out, our businesses are going down the drain, right? <laughs> it was the equivalent of a targeted class kind of environment for business owners. Um, and you can actually type in here, okay? Um, you can drag these, and where you find all these post-it notes is over here. This is your tool set. So you've got post-it notes you can pull over, you got bigger ones, you got circles. Um, if you want to comment, comment on things, there are text boxes that you can put in. Um, so lots of things that you can apply to this, this collaborative thing. If they're doing it on their own, um, <clears throat> I have a room for my different clients. Some of my clients that I'm using in Mural, um, I've done it there. Uh, so you can continue building on to one client's big mural. It's just a matter of what you want to put in there. You can put um, photographs in. Uh, you can do frameworks like grids, um, all kinds of things. Now, if you wanted to use it with a group and you wanted to totally kind of, it's like a facilitation session, you want them just for now with you to be using Mural, you can uh, share a link. So if I click share, I could copy this link it's going to be too time consuming for us to do this right now, um, but I could copy the link and email it to everybody that's participating in our group so that, uh, and send invitations. It works better to send it through your own invitation, your, your own email, so that they can all join you in here. They can drag their own post-it notes and do their own contributions to your conversation. I'm sure you can see as I'm just showing you a couple of the things why I'm saying I'm a fellow journeyer here. It does so much stuff, but they also have um, month long or monthly uh, coaches workshops that you can sit in on and learn how to uh, use the tool better if you want to use it for your clients. Um, that's one of the ways I see uh, potentially getting as close as I can to a flip chart kind of setting. Um, Is there a tutorial on that? Oh, they've got tutorials. Um, okay. Yeah, let me, sh let me show you a couple of other things. I do think that you, and this is gonna vary from client to client. Your client will wind up, if they, they can have their own account, if they wanna do mural and stuff that you're not involved in, they can do that too. Theirs are not free. That's why Mural gives us free ones, because we become their demo people for all of our clients, right? So um, let me go back here. I got a question about some of the things. <clears throat> so there are just a couple of templates. <laughs> um, and I have to tell you, I like to invent stuff. So. Uh, like, for instance, for a warm-up, if you were having a global group, this is one of the warm-ups. So you can have people do a sticky note with where their location is. Because you can zoom it, 
you can zoom in. Even if you are in, you know, even if we were in Reading, Pennsylvania, and wanted to know where people were in the US, you could have them put their little peg down. That's one of the warm ups. Um, so I'm just showing you where some of them were. People put logos of where their first job was. Um, it takes a little it takes a little doing to help them get oriented, um, but there are a lot of companies that are using this mural tour tool. You can create your own templates. Um, now, I think I told you earlier, and um, yeah, I'll just show it to you guys. We're among friends here. No, wait a second. <clears throat> I did something for a client recently, and um, this isn't about their information as much as it is how you can do the mural. I had a couple of slides that I wanted to use, and I could have used mural to do the beginning of this. I had a couple of slides, and I just pasted the slides into mural. So instead of running PowerPoint, and dealing with uh, are you viewing the app are you doing this are you looking at the screen share you know all that kind of stuff I just pasted them in and treated them like pictures and then I just moved oops I moved myself way out of bounds here I just moved from thing to thing I had post-it notes that I put in there we were doing an activity so I had the framework all set up. So it would be like preloading your flip chart. So you could have the different flip chart pages all ready to go. Then all they have to do, you need to type in or they, they pull their sticky notes over. You're really only limited by your creativity and how you want to use it and your willingness to mess around with it and your willingness to look stupid in front of your client if you forget how to do text in a box, which I have done. But what the hey. Um, part of my coach's philosophy is that we're, we're fellow journeyers, so we might as well just be open about our learning curve. So um, these are some things um, that I was hoping would give you some new stuff that you could do and some ways to use Zoom more effectively with your practice. Uh, what I'd like to do is just stop here now and talk a little bit. Um, questions, there were, there were a couple about could you do mind maps. Um, Jerry, there are a bunch of mind maps templates in there if you wanna look at theirs or you can, um, you could actually use your own post-it notes and just drag them to do a mind map. Um, so yes, you can do that in there. Um, I can't tell too much about how a client use, uses Mural on their own because right now my clients are only using it with me as far as I know. Um, but uh, if they have collaborative teams that are around the world, they can use any of the templates and they can kind of create their own discussion things. There are some things in there um, on feasibility studies, design thinking, um, uh, business model canvas. There are, whole, there are just a whole variety even on business model canvas that somebody could choose. And, you know, it. it what you choose to use partly depends upon whether you would prefer to try and figure out how to use somebody else's stuff or you know, and not start from scratch or whether you'd rather just build it out the way you want to do it. Uh, and that's kind of a coach by coach decision making process. Um, last thing I just wanted to say, and I promised I was opening it for questions and here I'm still talking, right? Um, I do have some coach friends that are using Mural that also just sit up a flip chart behind them and just use a flip chart. That depends on your space. Uh, it also depends on what kind of uh, 
visual people are doing. If you're in the front of the room and you're the primary person talking, you can put the settings uh, so that it's speaker view, so that whoever's speaking has the big picture. Right now I have a set on gallery view so I can see everybody at the same time. Um, if you're using a flip chart back here, the print's gonna get pretty small. Um, that's why I would probably advocate for using one of these other things, even if it's taking notes on Word or using your scribble on your, on your tablet. Uh, to have the image be as big as it can be. What other questions or comments or experiences do you have that you'd like to make part of the conversation? Feel free to unmute as, you know. Tom, you have something. Yeah, you were um, talking earlier about recording a session. Yes. Um, so I found this out the hard way, is that once you move everybody into a breakout room, the recording will record the main screen. So, and when everybody comes back, everybody's back. So when you play the recording back, it's like, uh, it's like somebody cut the tape, right? There's the blank on the tape kind of thing. Um, going back to the 70s, 80s. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the things that I saw somebody do and to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure. I think it was a good, I think it was a Zoom meeting, not a Zoom webinar. But when they had breakout rooms, they maintained an auditorium. Um, and in this, in this case, they had a keynote speaker that stayed in the auditorium and they had a conversation while everybody else was in the breakout room. They dumped us back into the breakout room into the middle of that auditorium conversation. Now, that what that would have solved is that issue that you're talking about with the blank tape. What it created, this is one of those unintended consequences, is people coming back in from the breakouts saying, oh, wow, all these people that were in the auditorium all this time were talking to the keynote speaker while we're out there in the breakout rooms. They, they were feeling like they weren't having the same experience. Yeah. But if um, I'm not sure exactly how you would fix that, um, but that is what they chose to do. I'm assuming, and I may be assuming it incorrectly, I'm assuming that might be why they did that, so yeah, that I'm they not, could maintain something. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, you know, you just gotta hit the pause button, and then when everybody comes back in, just restart your recording. You have to yeah, remember to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other thing. Yeah. yeah, if you have the presence of mind to. Yeah. Um, do that. Who else has something? Sandy, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to say another thing that I learned by bad experience is that if you are doing a slide, you know, you have a PowerPoint presentation, and this is in meetings, I haven't done it on the webinar, but in, in the meeting framework. And so you're going through, and if you have an embedded video, it will not show it. Uh -huh. You will see it as the, as the host, but nobody <laughs> nobody online will see it. You actually have to go into it. You have to open it specifically to put it on the screen for anybody else to see it. There's an yeah. option. Say, I'm sorry, Julie, you're going to address that? No, I was just going to say, when you've used a slideshow in your meetings, were you able to advance the slides without just me being uncoordinated that I was not able to advance the slides? Yeah, I could hit page up or page down or whatever, you know, arrow or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, because my my um, mouse was not responding when I was trying to advance them inside the slideshow. So, but I almost never do slideshows. Almost everything I do is like this, what we're doing here. So, you know, those are some things to learn. Wendy. Whoop. My question for you is knowing how you are the queen of facilitation and exercises and up and moving and, and all the stuff that you like to do to keep it very active. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now having to be more sitting in front zoom. What do you do to keep the activity going. Um, I do a lot of different screen shares and that's where um, for for coaching. This has come in. Um, quite a bit or or using mural if I have a longer session 
the other thing is, is it's really instilled in me an absolute need to have breaks. Um, people cannot uh, have, of those of you who have been using Zoom, has anybody used it for a longer thing like strategic planning or more than a, like a two and a half hour session? So how often have you, how have you documented the planning output? Sandy, have you documented the planning output? Well, as I didn't doing? do it for strategic planning, but I had to give a, a class that was nine to five on Zoom, which I tell you is really demanding <laughs> for for the host and also for everybody else. So I had I had periodic breaks. We had an hour for lunch, but I had a couple times. Okay, five, you know, a couple minutes to stretch here, stand up you know, things like that. But it's just really hard to keep people focusing on their screen from nine to five. Yeah, breakout meetings or breakout groups, uh, mixing those in, making sure at minimum every 90 minutes they have a break. Um, <laughs> one thing I was on, I did not do this. I personally do not like these, but I kept it just so I could show you. You can use devices, depending on where your clients are, if they're all in one place, but you're in another place, um, you can use, you know, these things. <laughs> I've seen 3D glasses. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not beyond using stunts to try, <laughs> you know, to try and keep people engaged. Um, you can get every, you can just say, okay, um, we're going to we're going to put you in a an imaginary space that's going to feel real, okay? So everybody get up and stand behind your chair. Seriously, everybody get up and stand behind your chair. Not on a chair. <laughs> All right, well, stand somewhere, okay? So what I'd like you to do, and preferably on camera so we can all laugh. Okay, I'd like you to put your arms out in front of you with one palm up and one palm down. Okay, now I'd like you to pretend that your left hand, whichever palm is facing down, has a helium balloon underneath it. Just pretend that it has a helium balloon underneath it. Come on, we're invoking our acting here. Okay, now your right hand has a brick on it. Now, all right, you can sit down. This can come into the conversation about habits of thought and your brain just remembers stuff. Was there really a helium balloon? No. Was there a brick? No. But if you can put your brain there, your hand moves, right? Now, you can use that, something like that for an illustration, but it also gives people an opportunity to stand up, move their body, um, and that, so tricks, tricks are fair game. <laughs> Actually, just expanding to that, do you have any suggestions for icebreakers? I mean, you gave one about where you could, when, you know, if you had a world map or a country map or whatever, you could say where people are from. But, you know, I'm so used to doing icebreakers where people moved around um, and did different things with introductions and it's a bit harder on Zoom. Do you have any, and actually, even I'll throw that out to Wendy as well. I mean, does does Tan have some, you know, a list of of icebreaker activities you can do on on Zoom? I think you know you you kind of take it. I take advantage of the fact that this is sort of like a Brady Bunch thing here. You know, you've got all these people on here, and why not just have a conversation? Um, I was on one where there were people from around the world and we talked about what was the first, what was the car you learned to drive on? Because some of them hadn't, they hadn't ever met one another before. Um, just asking questions to get to know one another. Sometimes movement is needed, sometimes movement isn't needed. Um, the biggest, the biggest change is that I can't tell you how much money that I spent on photocopies early in my practice. And now that's like with Zoom that goes away because you can't, on the other hand, if your facilitation is handout dependent, mm -hmm. now you've got to figure out either how to replicate that thought process through mural or through sharing your screen um, in some way or something else. 
Tom. I appreciate you. By the way, for those of you who can see, Tom is raising and lowering his hand when he's got something to say. Um, I appreciate that because it helps me call on you while you're still muted. But if you had something. Yeah, it, um, I use uh, polling questions for icebreakers. So a quick example is I would throw up a poll right now, anonymous poll, and, see if you, and it would have a list of about five superpowers. And so pick the superpower that you'd like to have. So read people's minds, fly, superhuman strength, whatever it might be. Close the poll down, show the results. But then I would go, so Sandy, what do you think Julie picked? And Sandy would say, well, I think Julie picked that. And I asked Julie, I said, well, did you pick that, Julie? And she goes, no, I picked that. And I'll say, well, what's the reason behind that? And we just kind of popped around doing that. So that kind of gets everybody engaged a little bit, thinking a little creatively. And I do that if I have a leadership team, as well as some, the, I did an all hands meeting with 24, and there was five people on the leadership team. So I had other people guess what the leadership team picked um, and then did some debriefs around that. So you can come up with some creative polling questions to be, get people engaged as well. I like that superpower question. Well, Wendy, um, we're, we're at our four o'clock time frame, and I know we have some people that have places to go. Thank you, thank you for all coming today and participating. Good to see all of you. <laughs> Good to see you too, Julie. Thank, thank you. you very thank you. much. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Excellent, Julie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Good to, good to see you. Likewise. Thank you. Bye -bye. Town hall tomorrow. Yes. At that three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye.